Hi guys, welcome back to Maverick Digital. My name is Rehan. Today we are gonna look at the new iPhone 11 Pro Max, the midnight green version. Let's have a look. Today we are looking at the new iPhone 11 Pro Max, the legendary iPhone of, from this year. Everyone's been really excited about it, really great features, really great stuff on it. So I thought I will order one and we can have an unboxing and have a look at some of the features. So let's have a look. There we go. So first thing we should look at is you, normally, you know, Apple's packaging is legendary. It's really beautifully designed. But one thing I've noticed this year is even the postal packaging, the board, the cardboard box has a special design. And I think we should all appreciate it. So let me just show it to, show it to you what I mean. Look at that, how beautiful is that? Normally you'd have a boring box where you open the lid and take the stuff out. But look at the presentation, you open this nicely designed box and there it is, your pride and joy. The iPhone you've paid for, you, all your life savings and everything. So look at the nice design on this beautiful piece of cardboard. So yeah, I, I thought I'd share that first. All right, cool, this is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Let's take it out and do the unboxing. All right, here it is, here's the big boy itself. Nice black box, a bit changed from the last year's one. Um, it has obviously the design of the new phone, the three lenses, the controversial, the talking point, the big talking about this iPhone, which everyone is excited or not too sure about. So let's have a look. The one I've got is the 256 gig version. So to make sure that it's a bit faster than the usual uh, cheaper one. So let's unbox it. So let's take the plastic off, nicely wrapped. This is a very nice touch Apple always does, easy to peel off. I'll, I'll use it near the mic. Oh, look at that, so beautiful. So here you go. Nice thing is you don't have to peel off the whole thing. You can actually keep the upper bit there in case you decide to return the box or something, or you just want to keep it pristine for resale value. So let's do that actually. Here you go, oh my goodness, this is a beautiful piece of engineering. So this is what we're looking at. And this is a bit of a change from previous years. Usually when you used to open the iPhone, you would have the display up, the whole black OLED display or any other LCDs. But this year you can tell by, by the way Apple's put it upside or upside, you know, yeah, the back first, is you can see Apple wants you to have a look the first look at the camera. The camera is really important for Apple this year. And that's why it's been positioned so you see that first thing. And also some of the different design changes like the back normally is a glass, but now it's a frosted glass, obviously for wireless charging and stuff. But you can see, see first thing, the Apple logos move downwards a bit. There's no small writing, no IMEIs or anything or that sort of stuff here. Really clean industrial design, nicely placed lenses here as well. So yeah, that's that's a beautiful first look. So let's take it out. Wow, this is beautiful. So one and another thing to note is the back is actually not covered in plastic. Usually you would have a wrap around plastic on these things, but this is only the front, the OLED glass only, which is quite expensive anyway. So nice to see Apple has done that. We look at the phone in a moment. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. So inside, as usual, there is some paperwork and in the paperwork, we can see, obviously it's going to be the usual stuff, the hello guide, so how to set it up, how to use some basic features and things uh, and the SOS stuff for you guys. And then there is the guide to how to take the SIM card out. SIM pin is there as well, the classic, uh, metal one as well some terms and conditions safety information uh the of the legendary or not legendary like it's it's compulsory every apple product comes with some sort of um these uh, stickers so uh, i i was hoping that these would have been in midnight gray or midnight green or something but they're in white that's the classic apple logo so yeah that's fine i think only the imac pro um, the, the iMac Pro comes with the black stickers, I'm not 100% but I think I've seen those but nothing else gets those colored um, stickers or anything. Cool, next up we have the headphones. 
standard stuff, the normal uh, AirPods, they're called, not AirPods, AirPods. Uh, and they have the lightning connector inside. S similar stuff like from last year, there's no change. Uh, AirPods would have been nice, that for like a phone which is 1300 pounds this one, a lot more in dollars. I would have loved to have a pair of AirPods in there, that would have been a sweet pro, pro deal. Okay, um, okay, this is a big change from uh, the, the previous years. So normally you would we used to have the USB, the normal USB to lightning cable. This is the first time in an iPhone, not an iPad Pro, they've done it before, is they have included a USB-C to lightning cable, which is nice, which is a great touch. But the reason for that is because they have a new power brick or the new power adapter. So this is the new adapter. This is the folding one. Let me quickly get one for you. So usually in other countries, you'd get a normal adapter with a two or three prong plug built in. But in the UK, because of the safety regulations here, we have a very different kind of a plug. You might have seen it. Usually it looks like this. You can see like here, it has three prongs for earth and negative and positive. I'm, I'm not an electri electrical engineer, so I don't know about these in, in detail. But usually this is the way a plug is. And this folding design, I believe it was Sir Johnny Ive who designed it. And this was of the first. And there are some other industrial designs I've seen as well where these things can fold. One thing, only if you, you're a Brit, if you live in, in the UK, you would know that these things, if they're on the floor and you step on them, they are they will hurt. They will destroy your foot. They hurt like any you've never like never you've never had that sort of pain. They they dig in. So that's why I think they've done it. If you step on it, it folds so you can see and it's a nice folding design. It opens up as well from here. You can easily pop it up. It's a very beautiful design. And as uh, and I believe this is a an 18 watt charger. This is a slightly more powerful one from the iPad, the previous generation iPads, and a much bigger, more powerful one from the bigger, the smaller phones we used to get one with. So the we used to get the five watt uh, point. 0.5 amp charger the small one which was just barely enough for like an iphone but this is a beautiful one this can fast charge your iphones and ipads as well uh, but it is usb-c you can see here see usb-c you see what i did there see <laughs> so, oh boy. yeah so this is a, a new change this so this is hopefully the way the other things are this is what it looks like things are going for so USB-C is there this is a lot more universal the iPhone itself hasn't changed the iPhone still has um, the lightning connector as you can see here so that's that's the one wish everyone has that day if we could only get USB-C on it but I doubt Apple's gonna do that the Apple's invested millions in the lightning connector and the whole ecosystem is built around it maybe maybe in a couple of years but it's not happening anytime soon all right the phone itself the big boy itself so let's have a look so the phone the big few features physically you can see generally the size first of all is the same as the previous year's iphone tennis max uh, but a few different things so on all the previous ones there was no green color this is the midnight green looks very nice it's it's the the stainless steel ring is also the same matching color uh, one one worry i have is this is probably gonna get if it gets scuffed or it get, gets nicked with something or scratch this will show the the normal stainless steel color on, underneath it um otherwise the front oled display 6.5 inch beautiful display just like before the notch is there as well you've got the cameras the 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 big talking point about this especially the big phones the 11 pro and 11 pro max is these three cameras so one of them is a telephoto one of them is a ultra wide and one is a normal size uh, lens uh, compared to com if you compare this to the iphone 11 11 only has a normal lens and ultra wide doesn't have the telephoto so that's that you you pay extra to go telephoto if you wanted that so otherwise you can see frosted glass just like before but uh, glass like before but it's frosted so it's a look 
I was gone for and the, the this bit of glass with the lenses inside it this is not frosted in in the iPhone 11 it's the opposite the, the back is shiny and this bit of glass is frosted okay so otherwise the button placement is in the same place you still have a manual silent a mute switch as well the antennas are there antennas are nice and clean You've got the power button, the Siri, wake up button, whatever you want to do with it. SIM tray is there. This is a, this is the dual. So all the, these things are the dual SIM versions. So one of them, not dual physical SIMs. One is a physical and one you can have as a nano SIM. So you can have two networks in one phone, which is a pretty cool deal. Um, yeah, speakers. This has got the same speaker and mic placement underneath. You can see here. And the... Um, the receiver and the mic and and stuff is the same it's apparently louder than before this has spatial sound so if you have dolby atmos enabled on netflix or some other service or movies you download from itunes it will feel a bit different so which is a great thing to have all right let's peel off the plastic from the front and power this thing on Oh, beautiful, nice black display, very dark, which is a sign of all OLED TVs or displays. It's not Vanta black, black, but it's very dark. Setting up the Face ID is slightly faster. Face ID on this has been improved a bit, not with the angles. The, un the unlocking speed is a bit better with this. Okay, here it is. The phone is now set up, it's in. Standard screen hasn't changed in years, but most probably you guys know about that. Looks a lot crisper, sharper. Currently, I am on a my previous phone was an iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus. So, compared to that, this looks very, very sharp, tack sharp. Black levels are really nice. The crispiness, the bigger screen, definitely you can notice it as well. So First thing we're gonna look at, the big thing, is I'm gonna check out the cameras. Cameras look amazing on it. To do some photography or camera tests, I've got Mr. Mario here, a small toy I've had for a while. So I'm gonna take photos from all three lenses and show you the difference. And then you can see if it's good or not. So this first one, you can see, is the wide one. The wide looks absolutely amazing. And then I'm going to 1x, the normal lens, not the telephoto, not the ultra wide. And then I will go to the telephoto. And this looks nice. Oh my goodness, the camera quality, the colors. Uh, I know it's a bit of the OLED magic as well, but still the crispiness is very noticeable. It looks very sharp, beautiful color rendition. Absolutely amazing. Okay. So as you can see on the display, on the screen right now, all the three photos, they look really, really amazing. Mario, you can see the wide angle. It looks absolutely amazing. You can see all of my bedroom and everything and there, all the cameras and stuff. And, uh, and the normal one, you can see just a normal face as well. And Mario with the 2X zoom, it looks amazing as well. You can see the details quite nicely and the colors are very beautiful. Slightly oversaturated, not oversaturated, slightly saturated, but still look beautiful look lovely and now let's look at the video side of things as well so i'm gonna try some video so this again this is the ultra wide of this model this toy here this you can see it looks beautiful if i go in always focused very nice looking That looks amazing. This ultra wide camera is absolutely a game changer. So this is 1x. This is obviously a bit more zoomed in. And this is the telephoto. This is very, very nice, very sharp. You can see on the screen, the detail, the colors. Oh my God, this is absolutely beautiful. Very, very nice results. So the ultra wide lens Apple's used on this is a 13 millimeter wide lens. Normally, if you compare it to a real world real or a normal camera, this is a real camera as well, a normal camera lens, I've got this uh, lens of mine, this is the Sigma 16 mil lens. And you can see the size of this lens 
and it does only one focal length and it's 60 it's quite wide as well this is wider than that so which, which is amazing and right now the camera the lens i'm using is the sony 10 to 18 f4 and this is currently at about 12 so it's quite similar as well quite similar sort of focal length so you could this is amazing that's why i'm really pleased and surprised with the wide camera and the lens it looks absolutely beautiful and the light and color colors are look, looking really nice as well in terms of the front camera, it looks beautiful, slightly wider again. Let's go to a normal photo. I will take a photo of myself and let's see. And then in terms of front portrait mode, that's nice as well. But let's try some of the other studio modes. So I've got stage light. I've got stage light mono. In terms of front video, it is, uh, this is the normal portrait view as you can see this is my studio my mic the big light i've got on top of me oh my god that is nice and then this is the slow-mo so you can go hello so that's the camera the camera is amazing on it otherwise the display is uh, very nice and sharp it's one thing it's missing which i would have loved is a sort of a pro motion high frame rate um, display like the ipad pro has or on the android uh, side of things you've got the oneplus sevens one oneplus seven pros they have a 90 hertz display that would have made this a lot sweeter not that it's a bad thing but once you touch those iPad Pros or those OnePluses, then you feel the other displays are slower. So guys, this was a quick, quick look at the new iPhone 11 Pro Max. I will, because I have the phone now, I'll be doing more videos about this phone, or about the specifics of the cameras. I'll do some filming and some photography with it and then post separate videos so you guys can see and compare how it looks. And I'll also compare it with my iPhone 7 to see if it's worth upgrading now. A lot of people are on iPhone, iPhone 6 Pluses, 6S's, 7's, 8's as well. Um, in, my, in my opinion, if you are an, on anything or like the iPhone 7 or previous generation iPhones, definitely this iPhone is worth it. Or the iPhone 11. Let me know if you like a review of that. Uh, if you've got the iPhone 8, maybe, yes. If you want to move to the Face ID side of the things, then you can definitely go for it. But if you've got the iPhone 10 or the 10s, I don't think you need this phone because there there is only a few incremental improvements on, on the device it's not a huge game changer especially because you are the 10 and 10 as users are used to face id oled displays bigger sizes screens so the only thing missing really is the ultra wide camera if you really daily miss it or you love that in your life absolutely go for it but i i would suggest that you guys should wait maybe for next year's iphone if there is one and see what apple does next year and then jump to that uh, flagship phone so guys, let me know what your thoughts are about the new iPhones, the 11s and the 11 Pros, the 11 Pro Max. Have you guys uh, decided you guys going to go for it or are you guys going to wait for next year's one? Uh, let me know in the comments and uh, if you liked the video, if there was any, in you, if it was any use, if you liked it, please uh, thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.